about things about Tom Hanks on the internet. So I don't know if it, have you've heard anything about Tom Hanks on the internet or have you have you seen things? <laughs> I dropped the verbs out of my list. But because for of, that reason. Because of, yeah, this is... So so this basically there's this this is conspiracy, right? And I found this on Twitter. And I'm blaming lockdown for this, right? Because lockdown gave me a lot of spare time to just basically follow rabbit holes, go down rabbit holes and learn about things and read about conspiracies and stuff. So there is this mad conspiracy, right, about Tom Hanks and various other Hollywood celebrities um, who are, I'm trying to think of a way to word it, who... uh, (laughs) Fiddle with kids. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I just don't want to say it, but um, the, it, it it basically stems from Hillary Clinton. So, like, and like I say, it, it is a whole. It's 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 a rabbit hole that you go down. So you read one thing, and it takes you to a million different things. But the whole thing stems from the the Hillary Clinton emails that got leaked, um, and various celebrities getting pulled into this whole world of. Um, kind of yeah children being you know kidnapped and abused and all this sort of stuff so there's all this stuff and Tom Hanks's name is dropped into it and it kind of like it's like really weird because then if you if you look um, he's recently relocated to Greece and had become a Greece a, a, a Greek citizen hasn't he and um, and there's all these celebrities at the moment that have kind of dropped off radar due to due to lockdown um, Ellen and Oprah um, are apparently, and again, this is all conspiracy and it's all over the internet, but are on house arrest. So um, there's pictures of them and it looks like they've got, you know, like a little ankle Mm -hmm. bracelet on. So like I said, there's this whole conspiracy that basically they've all been caught (laughs) doing things that they shouldn't do, two children, um, and they're all under house arrest, which is the whole lockdown thing. Um, or they have relocated. Simon Cowell recently broke his back and is no longer um, available to appear on America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent. And again, this is me just speculating. <laughs> um, and and there, was, there was a guy in Hollywood that kind of was a bit of a whistleblower and he whistle blew on Tom Hanks and Hollywood producers and a few other names. Um, one of which is was Seth Green, and I absolutely Seth Green was like one of my favourite actors in the entire world. Um, and he was one of the names that came up with this guy. Um, and this guy is no longer around. <laughs> so there's another conspiracy. So there's so much stuff that's that's kind of out there, and weirdly. I don't know. It's, it's it's weird. What do you think? It's it's kind of weird to it's weird to make any sense of it. But if if there was a, an internet conspiracy going around to say you're a paedophile or whatever you know you want to coin it, and you're not, hmm. you would be out there going, "I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm absolutely not." Yeah. And all it's meant with is dead. Dead silence. Yeah. You know, dead, there's dead, no dead space. There's, there's no acknowledgement. Yeah. There's no. There's there's no no not. Um, it's just blanket silence. So. I think to be honest with you, Seth Green did actually kind of address it where someone accused him, and he was like, "Look, this guy had mental health issues, and he's just randomly shouting out names." So I think no, that's. Uh, and now he's yeah, he jumped off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Um, by the way, I just don't like bridges, just to say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's just kind of like, uh, you, like you say, you would just flat out deny it if, if that was the case. And a lot of the, the Ep- Jeffrey Epstein stuff um, is tied to it as well. So there's a lot of celebrity names that, that cross paths um, that are a part of this whole conspiracy as well. It's just that um, makes big creepy fucking movie yeah maybe it was like 20 30 years ago yeah and i think that's that's kind of like really it it worries me a lot because then i think about people like um the girl from poltergeist heather o'rourke and she died at a very very young age 
Um, and again, as part of this whole, and I'm, this lockdown rabbit hole that I went down, there was this whole thing of she was a part of, part of it, and she was unfortunately a casualty of it. Um, in fact, there's there's a thing, and apparently it's fake. So that's why I'm going to say it like it's come out as a, as a fake thing. But there was a Macaulay Culkin interview where he said that some Hollywood director had taken him into his office and told him that his shoes were made out of Heather O'Rourke. And you can look that up. That's like a genuine like conspiracy that's out there. And Macaulay Culkin has flat out denied it, but it has come from somewhere. <laughs> um, so there's that. And then I also think about people like Drew, Drew Barrymore. Um, so Drew Barrymore was in E.T. And then I think by the age of about 12, was she not like a heroin addict or yeah, a, yeah. A, a, an alcoholic? And you have to think, what drives these children to these behaviours like Corey Feldman? most recently is is all over the news because he's he's produced this um film where he's he's out in certain hollywood people and hollywood producers um he's alluding to a lot of it he's not naming names i'm assuming because he's scared um but yeah there's there's all this kind what's of what's he scared thing. of or is he scared of lawsuits or is he scared of falling off a bridge yeah yeah, yeah. both both um you know corey Haim is, is no longer with us what, what was the reasons behind that? You know, it, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of children actors that have so many issues, and that has to have come from somewhere. So I think Harvey Weinstein's Me Too is the start of our revolution, but a lot of other stuff is going to start coming out. It dates back as well to uh, Judy Garland. In the Wizard of Oz and how she was treated. So apparently, in, in when she was filming the Wizard of Oz, she was given sleeping tablets to sleep, and then she was given amphetamine to keep her awake on set. So imagine that balance of sleeping mm-hmm. and, and keeping you awake and stuff like that. Apparently, she was molested while she was on set and things like that. So it, it dates back so far, and now we're coming to an era where people aren't scared to talk out anymore and there's so many platforms for people to come out and say things that... Plus all they do is get an old house, yeah. so, you know, there's only so far the money can say. You yeah, know. there's only so much you can get away with. That Jeffrey Epstein, I mean, that... If you watch the documentary on Netflix, that's been going on for 20 plus years, but now we're at that stage where people are brave enough to come out or they've grown up and they're ready to, to tell them. I think with the Epstein thing, I think people were coming out at the time, but yeah, no one they, listened. Yeah, they weren't being listened to, and, yeah. and, and because of you know, um, circ- personal circumstance or whatever, or the type of families or neighbourhoods that they came from, and, and so on yeah. and so forth. I mean, there's, I mean, Corey Feldman to me kind of blew the roof off everything because it was after he first, or oh, some talk show host guy that basically mentioned the names yeah um but then that was when the me too movement came out shortly after that didn't Um, as well didn't someone try and like run down Corey? like didn't like he was walking down the street and someone literally was trying to run him down according to him he's like three or four times yeah um so and and again i think that also ties in with Corey. hey this is again just my own head thing of, of, of what I've I think it, what I was thinking the other week was it would be an interesting um, thing to maybe watch the two Corys now that you know because yeah. that went for a couple of seasons didn't it so um, I, I remember watching it when it first came out and the two Corys it was kind of like um, you had Hayden was like the you know the, the guy that was just the wild card yeah. wasn't he and um, and and Feldman was the one with the family and just trying to keep it on the straight and narrow, but still a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, if you watch it back, will it tell a different story? There, there, there was um, a clip in Corey's film where it did show a clip from that where they were having an argument in the diner. Yeah. And he was like sat across him going, really, yeah, I can't remember what they were arguing about, it was really half a word and through, you know, yeah. and it starts talking about like casting couches and. Yeah. Stuff like that. But yeah, you, you might be able to go back and look at some of that and then uh, think, I don't know, maybe I'll write a, a big story and, yeah. <laughs> and, and just drop in 
Heather walks in her shoes. I don't, I don't yeah. really like it. The whole, the whole concept's fucking weird, isn't it? Yeah. So um, we'll probably never know for sure. Yeah. Um, well, there, was the, there was a producer on Nickelodeon as well um, who, is, I don't know if he's been sent to prison or if he, but he's definitely been on trial. So he was like a, a producer of Nickelodeon and he produced all of the big like Nickelodeon things. Like remember that So Raven mm-hmm. and things like iCarly. Um, and he's, he's been sent down or he's been done for it I don't know if he's in prison or not but like so he had this thing with feet like children's feet and so there's all these stories about like him getting children to like like massage his feet and things like that it's time like, to like a season of toddlers and tiaras no, that was on Jimmy Kimmel who was also been mentioned <laughs> in these things in these logs but um, yeah, so um, Tom Hanks, and it was with his own daughter, did this weird toddlers and tiara sketch, like where he was like the proud parent of this little girl that was showing her ass to to the world and stuff. And yeah, so kind of weird. And also, um, so if you look it up, like um, I feel like we've totally gone off topic from the favourite films, but um, a lot of it is is related to pizza. Right, so there's this whole thing about celebrities and pizzas and secret messages and things like that. And Ellen, when she hosted the Oscars, um, got pizza. Do you remember? So she yeah, got yeah. pizza delivered to uh, to the Oscars. Um, and if you watch the clips now, so it's again, it's it's one of them in hindsight. If you watch it back, it's actually kind of weird and creepy. So she gets this pizza delivered. Um, which is the key word for for what's going on? And she, the first person that she goes to is Harvey Weinstein. The next person that she goes to is Kevin Spacey, and it's kind of like it's in plain sight. So it's either it's either just a massively weird coincidence, or a really weird and creepy we're rubbing it in your face. <laughs> it's one of them. It's like well, I don't it's know. a movie, and 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 a movie. Yeah. But I never really liked Ellen anyway, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't think she's a very pleasant person at all. Um, and I'm kind of um, glad that there's this whole um, rebellion against her at the moment as well. So there's like lots of people now coming out, employees. She's not a nice person. So she puts on this whole, oh, I'm so nice and lovely and wonderful and approachable. But as soon as the cameras go off, she's just a different person. Um, and I can see that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can see that, how that would come across. <laughs> I mean, I've always thought she just looks fake as fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't even know why people would watch. Yeah. I've, I've never seen grown women in an audience scream and shout so much over. <laughs> yeah. Somebody. Well, other than Oprah, who, you know, same, same situation, really. Um, I, I think I've watched episode of Ellen, I don't know, it was maybe, maybe a couple of years ago, I was at home for some reason, or I think, I think yeah, I think we were on holiday, because I, I remember you saying to me, oh my like, god, the audience what? is, is yeah. ripped out on something, yeah. it was like they'd given the entire audience amphetamine or I think, something. I think they just give them free stuff so that they get excited, you know, so that they're pumped and ready to like, it was just, it, it was just odd, it was like, like nobody gets that excited right. at three in the afternoon. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you've got to go and pick the kids up in an hour. Um, but yeah, there, there was a story like there was an audience member that was like picked to, to participate in one of her shows, and um, when she was picked, the producer said, Don't be funnier than Ellen. Do not be funnier than Ellen. <laughs> it's like, What? He says that. <laughs> you have to try that. Like, I just got to stand there and not say anything because she ain't funny. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's, there's like yeah, there's there's so many stories um, about like how she's. So the, another thing was this, there's this story where she um, apparently no one's allowed to make eye contact with her. Um, there's a couple of well, so you're not allowed to make eye contact. Turns a fucking stone. <laughs> yeah. Don't make eye contact with her and get sacked. And also, she, apparently, she has a bowl of mints outside her office because if you want to go in and speak to her, you have to have fresh breath. She doesn't like breath unless you've had a mint when you've gone in to see her. So there's that. But then um, she apparently she held a meeting, a Zoom meeting with all the team after all these allegations. And she was saying to them, what? This whole eye contact thing is ridiculous. If you see me and you want to say hi, say hi. And I was just thinking, surely you've been there for like years and years. No one's making eye contact. If you're genuinely a nice person, would you not think, 
there's no one looking at me. <laughs> You'd be like, why are you not looking at me? Why are you not making eye contact? As not, a normal person would think that, right? <laughs> or is that just me? Just, just a fucking weirdo. Like, just... <laughs> I think it's blatantly obvious. I think, I think all the humour is forced humour. Yeah. I think people are forced to laugh at stuff. I don't know why she was famous in the first place. I don't know how she got sick on that. And that ran for a fucking long time. Um, it, it was... It, the whole thing's just shite. Yes. <laughs> just, I, don't, I don't get why anyone would want to watch it. Yeah. At all. You know, it's like kind of putting fucking Mrs. Brown boys on in the same sort of scenario. Someone watches it, yeah. I know that, but that's the, they're the people I don't get. Like, yeah. I don't understand it. I don't... I, yeah, I don't know. I know. <laughs> So yeah, we have deviated a little bit from the uh, from the favorite films, um, but yeah, just to say that Big was one of my favorite films. But now because of this whole, you know, pizza thing, um, and, uh, and like, I just think it's weird that he's he's gone to Greece. It's just it, it's just one of them. It's like it just makes no sense. Anyway, so it kind of puts me off. And like you said, was the burbs in yours? Um, yeah, and then, I don't know if it was like in kind of the top five but it was in our honourable mentions yeah. and I think that sometimes with, with certain actors Ellen probably definitely one of them like you know obviously she's not a movie person but actors go through these weird sort of cycles and changes and you can see that sometimes with, with people and certainly I think you see it in the late years of Tom Hanks yeah. um, where he almost just becomes we're just going to put this guy in, in anything and it'll make people go and watch it. Yeah. You know, I think when you get to that sort of level, not that it, it then becomes less about the acting ability because yeah. his acting ability is brilliant. But, I, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of Tom Hanks. Like, I, you, you put Tom Hanks on at the cinema, I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily go and watch it. I've never liked things like Forrest Gump. Mm-hmm. They're not for me. You know, I think I've watched Private Ryan two or three times. Mm-hmm. That was a good film. But it, again, it, it wasn't Tom Hanks that made that. That was the way it was directed. There's another film that people say the favourite as well, like Saving Private Ryan. It's like a game of seeing it once. But <laughs> um, Definitely seen that more than once. But again, it's not a film that I just put on the door. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say just to like, you know, add fuel to the, the conspiracy is just look at his reaction to Ricky Gervais and the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> just watch Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes now you've heard what we've said and watch his reaction and then you know go from there but actually I was a huge fan of Tom Fa- Tom Hanks in like kind of the early, early I thought Spielberg's reaction was bad <laughs> what was his reaction I can't remember. go back and watch it <laughs> there's, there's nothing in Indiana Jones so an Indiana Jones film that's not the ah, um, yeah. the, it makes, makes sort of Marion doesn't it if, yeah. you, if you do the math when she's talking about like relationship with, yeah. with Indiana Jones and she says I was a child and you yeah, knew it was wrong yeah but you just again is it hiding in plain sight or is it just an oversight I think I the, the explanation for Indiana Jones is it's set in like the 19 uh, what is it like 40s or something yeah. something along the 50s yeah. late, early 50s but late still 40s, yeah. still even when it's set there's certain things you stay away from <laughs> in the modern day uh, and I would say probably maybe that's one of them but I don't know it's a bit weird yeah so yeah Golden Globes is definitely one to, to reference <laughs> and have a look at it and uh, just whatever Ricky Gervais puts on Twitter really and he put on recently didn't he he was like please nominate me for an Emmy unless you're a pedo <laughs> I mean, to be fair Family Guy has sort of been, been holding me for for years yeah. You know, so there's, there's people out there that know, and these are probably, I know Ricky Gervais goes on that level because he knows he won't get nominated for anything no matter what he makes because he doesn't, he won't conform. Yeah. So, it, from his perspective, he's got nothing to lose other than, you know, just making sure he's more than Emmett Bridges and stuff. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, you know, <laughs> it's weird, it's deep, it's too, it, it's too deep to talk about without kind of like, not overstepping any boundaries, but just sort of like sounding like complete conspiracy theories, not the case. Because I've got my own theories about it, and yeah. I, you know, it's, it's just not a nice thing for people to have had to have gone through. Yeah. Um, 
But again, again I, I, I guess, guess my, my my perception or my my trouble is how widespread it seems to be. Yeah. And that's why I can't kind of quite grasp. Yeah. Well, that's it. Like I say, there was a lot of stuff I was not aware of, and once you once you delve into it, it's like. Pfft, what? Boys can't be everybody. Yeah, yeah. It can't be everybody. Boys um, kind of alluding to that. Yeah, it's kind of um, like it's it's. But like I say, it's, it just takes you to the thing of like, like, who else is involved? What's going on here? What's true? What's not? We don't know. But it just it it piques your interest so much that you just can't let it go. Piques yeah. your interest probably because it's something that you're not really set to believe mm. in the first place. Mm. So. First of all, it's disbelief. Then it's kind of like, well, could this happen? Mm. Don't see why not. And mm. then what? The other, you know, I, I remember watching a, um, a murder porn type show yeah. um, a few years ago, and it was just about a lad who was uh, doing, his, doing his paper on it. was set in the 1980s, yeah. and he disappeared. And they didn't find him. They found his bike in the road and his dog. And his parents knew straight away that there was something like really untoward that had happened because he never went anywhere without his dog. And his yeah. dog would have followed him wherever he went. So they knew he'd been snatched. Yeah. They couldn't prove it, yeah. but they just knew. Yeah. And they found him about 15 or 20 years later. And he was in one of these like, I don't even know what you call it. It wasn't a cult, it was kind of like these kind of old ground houses in America with like kind of sub basement system yeah. he was a prisoner in one of these and there was more than just him and, and it was like houses with fucking tunnels and stuff like dug where they were all kept and they were like pimped out to people and i think he was found because somebody recognized him yeah. and he wouldn't go back because he, he, he'd been completely conditioned, conditioned to yeah. it and and he, it was weird for him at that point so do you know what I mean? Like, like it, it definitely, definitely goes on, it definitely happens, but it's yeah. how how is it that widespread? Yeah. And that's what I'm, I that's what I struggle to get my head around yeah. sometimes. The only other thing I was going to say on it, because my, my uh, mind just came back to it, it was Justin Bieber um, and his yummy video. So apparently, this is a big, big, um, like Justin Bieber's trying to tell us something that he was maybe um, a victim of of it because he was so young when he got into the industry so if you watch the justin bieber yummy video um there's a lot of um pointers towards things so there's like young children that are playing in like that are musicians and they're you know like an elitist party then at the very end like the last shot of it is um cake being eaten off a plate and then when the plate clears it's it's a very young justin bieber saying yummy on it and stuff so yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that you just like, you just can't stop reading about and, and all that. It's just kind of crazy. <laughs>